Hi, my name is Jack from Painted Legion, and today I'm going to be painting a High Fleet Tiamat. Now I'm searching for a scheme that I can paint my own army in, and so I've been practicing painting a bunch of different schemes. My main goals when approaching each of the schemes is to, one, it for it to be fast. And we do that by using easy techniques to use, like using contrast paints uh, and dry brushing to get uh, as much color on there as quickly as possible, but in a way that looks good. Uh, and two, to finish the scheme in a way that looks like the heavy metal schemes. Now, if you didn't know, Games Workshop released the heavy metal recipes for some of the main high fleets that they have in the codex. Now, I've put together a recipe here that I painted in under an hour, but I reckon you could get a lot, lot faster. Uh, and you'll see in a moment that uh, it, it's a really, really quick scheme, really simple, and you get a really great striking looking model uh, at the end of it. So first we're going to start with uh, Night Haunt Gloom. And we're just going to paint this all over uh, a model that's been primed white. And really, you just want to get a, a one decent layer over the whole model. You don't need to, to thin it at all. You just take it straight out of the pot and put it on the model and make sure that you don't get any excessive pooling. It doesn't matter too much if you get um, pooling on the underside of the model where, where the, the most shadows are going to be. They're not going to be seen by most, by most people anyway. But make sure you get into those crevices and, and shadows underneath the model. Make sure you get everything, especially the inside of the arm that holds the gun. Easy to miss that, uh, and something that you'd see uh, looking from the top. Next, we're going to dry brush. Uh, I didn't show the paint here, but we're taking Ulthuan Grey, and we're going to do a heavy dry brush over the top of uh, over the top of the model here. And we're going to pick out all the major details with this Ulthu and Grey and really build up the, uh, the color here. This is the main, the main skin tone that we're gonna have. It's slightly bluish, so it matches the blue-green that we've got in, the, in the, uh, uh, the shadows already. Now I'm using my, my texture pad to work the paint into the bristles. Really useful to have one of those. And just work up the color until you're happy that you've got all the major areas covered with that white. These new Tyranid models are fantastic for dry brushing. Next, grab some Incubi Darkness, and we're going to mix this in with some contrast medium. And we're going to make a sort of wash using this color. You, you don't need you don't need much of this paint at all. Um, because Incubi Darkness is a base paint, it's got a lot of pigment in it. Uh, so if you put too much in with your contrast medium, you're just going to, you're essentially gonna paint over what you've done already. Uh, using the Ulthu and Grey and the, the Nighthawk Gloom. And we don't want that. We just want to, we want to stain uh, some of the shadows of the armor with this color, just to give a bit more color variation. So you see how the paint's going on on the model. It's 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 a really light, really light wash. Um, but it's gonna fo and we're gonna focus this into the the shadows, particularly um, the underside of the body, in between the the muscles on the arms there, uh, and sort of the underside of the arms as well, and anywhere where the Nighthawk gloom has has really um, collected on the model. Some of those deeper deeper recesses. So underneath the armor, the holes around uh, the head and also the holes around the back of the tail. Okay, next, we're going to take Cabalite Green. It's a layer paint, so slightly, slightly uh, less pigment in it than one of the ba base paints. It's also a bit thinner, more opaque, uh, sorry, more transparent. And we're going to mix this again with some contrast medium. And we're going to go for a slightly more a heavy mix with this one, more so than we did with the Incubi Darkness, because we're going to put this into the, the vents. We don't want to completely flood the area with, with this color. We want to just make sure that it's, it's sitting nicely in the recesses, but we do want this to be a fairly strong color. We want it to be clear that this is a different part of the model. This is the, the most fleshy parts of the Tyranid. 
And again, just building on that color variation and giving it some, some life on, on what is actually a pretty strange skin tone. Just put a little bit into the shadows. Don't go crazy with this. Less is more with this. We're just, just building on, on those colors, giving it some interest. You know, if someone picks up this model, they've got something to look at. It's very, it's very quick and easy technique to use here. It's, it's, and it gives you a really good result. Okay, next we're going to take Volupus Pink. And we're going to paint the gun with this one. Make sure that you, uh, you're careful around the fingers. It's a nice little detail on this model, but it's very annoying to paint around. <laughs> Personally, I think uh, I could do without it. Next, we're going to go with uh, uh, Black Legion. We're going to black out basically all, all the details of the model. So the hooves, the talons, the, the armor panels, as well as the armor panels on the, uh, the weapon. And also the uh, the little pokey spike bits that you get on the gun and, and the back of the heel. So then we're going to get Incubi Darkness and Lupercal Green, and we're going to mix those on our on our palette. Again, you don't need to use a a wet palette for this. These these colors are actually quite uh, quite runny. I I mixed <laughs> I mixed one already, uh, as you can see on the left there, but. It was too uh, it was too watery, so I've used that to to dilute the the next uh, thing there. And you you really don't need to di dilute this very much. It goes on quite quite smooth. I'm going to do a, a coat of this over the uh, over the black armor part panels. Don't do this on the um, the armor panels for the gun. Leave those black for now. We're going to do those a slightly different color. This is for the, the main chitin armor panels on the Tyranid itself. So just working that, that first layer on. Don't, don't go too thick with this. You're going to need two coats for this. Two, two thin coats, as old Duncan Rhodes would say. Get your two thin coats on there and uh, you'll have a, a good strong color. You don't have to mix this, you could go just straight Lupercal Green if you don't want to mix it, or Incubi Darkness, whichever you prefer. I, I wanted this to really, especially with the armor plates, I wanted this to match the, the Ever Metal scheme as closely as possible. Because this is the one of the main parts of the model, probably the most important part of the model to get right and to get a good color on. So there we are, that's, that's the two thin coats uh, over the armor panels there. And next we're going to pick up a Black Templar. Now I picked up I picked up Black Legion for some reason I don't know why I, I misread the two I have them sit, sat next to each other on my desk. Um, Black Legion has much better coverage, but it's much closer to a black paint than a contrast paint, uh, whereas Black Templar is closer to a wash than an actual paint. And that's what I wanted here is to use it as a wash to to darken the gaps between the the armor panels. Uh, but I, without realizing, I picked it up and, and I've, I've done what I do here essentially with Black Templar and, and panel lined, but it's come out as a stronger line, which isn't wrong. If you want to do it this way, go for it. Um, but yeah, it, it's easier and faster to do it with Black Templar. And while we're doing this, I just want to say, uh, if you like what you've seen so far on this tutorial, please like and subscribe and support the channel. I've got a bunch more Hive Fleet um, schemes on the way that'll follow this kind of template where I'm, I'm trying to stick as close as possible to the heavy metal uh, recipes, but also make a recipe that's quick to do, but gives a good result. Yeah, keep an eye out for those. And also I do commission painting. So if you'd like me to paint something for you, uh, go have a look at my Instagram. I've got a bunch of pictures of the kind of stuff I've done. I've done some Titanica stuff, some Space Marine stuff. Uh, yeah, and if you're interested in the commission, then drop me a message. So moving on from the panel lining there, we're going to get some Flesh Terrors Red. You don't have to use Flesh Terrors Red, you could use something like Mephiston. But I really like this color, so that's, uh, that's what I picked. It's a good contrast paint, this is fan fantastic red. You get some really, really good deep reds using this, this paint. And then in the end, I did, I did fish out my Mephiston Red, because I needed some control for the eye. 
it doesn't didn't show so well here because uh, I was holding it at a weird angle. But uh, I'll try and get this one on camera a bit better. There we go. Get the line in and oh, my camera died. <laughs> It's really annoying because I did paint some of the gun as well, which I, I wish I could show. Um, uh, just quickly, I'm, I'm doing some Troll Slayer orange there on the on the eyes, on the gun, and on the uh, the eyes of the Tyranid itself. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about what I did for the gun here. I used Vallejo Old Rose. Uh, it's a good good sort of light pink color, um, which isn't too too saturated with pink. Um, to highlight the raised areas of the gun and give it some uh, give it some interest. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You could just leave it with the contrast for lupus pink. Uh, but I wanted to put that detail in. Makes it look good. I didn't show the paint here, but this is Scaven Blight Dinge. We're just using that to to highlight the the armor panels, the black armor panels that we left on the gun. But also the other black details like the the, the spines here on the gun and the, the talons of the Tyranid itself. And if you want, um, put some on the, the hoofs. Leave the teeth black. We're going to paint those a slightly different color. If you were so inclined, you could highlight this further with uh, a storm vermin fur. It's a great brownish black color, this one, brownish gray. One of my favorite black recipes to use a black Skaven Blight Dinge and Storm Vermin Fur. It gives a, a really good looking black that's a bit different to the, the, the clean blue highlighted black that you normally get. Okay, next, this is the really important part. We're going to take Sons of Horus Green. And we're going to use a sort of feathering motion on the armor panels. Now, the trick for this is to hold the model or the part of the model that you're going to paint perpendicular to your brush. So at a right angle. And you're gonna you're gonna quickly, in a quick feathering motion, paint along the edge of the armor panel. When you get good at this, you can do this really, really quickly. Arguably, you can do this faster than you could edge highlighting these panels. And it these are, it's such an important technique to, to learn, especially with Tyranids, because the, the Tyranid models really, really come alive when you use this particular technique on the armor panels. It gives them a really uh, interesting, organic look to the model. It looks fantastic. It really looks really good, especially on a tabletop model. Even if you don't do it very well, it'll look good um, at a distance. It'll look good on the table. So don't worry about messing it up. You could always come back and neaten it up once you get better at it. But once you've done you know, 20 termagant models using this technique, you'll, you'll be able to do it really well. So there's, there's the finished, finished look and the model's almost done now. You can see on the gun there where we've, where we've highlighted using Vallejo Old Rose. Again, you don't have to do that. I just uh, I like to do at least one highlight on the major parts of the model. Okay, so next we're gonna take Xandri Dust and Screaming Skull. I'm gonna paint in the teeth. So Xandri Dust first. Not too much paint on your brush. I ha I've gone in neat from the pot here. Uh, with a lot of the paints I've used, I haven't, haven't diluted, diluted them at all, which is great for speed. And what you wanna do is just get a a line on the top of the tooth, the most raised part of the tooth. And next we're going to take our screaming skull. I'm going to put a small dot on the most raised, on the, the pointy part of the tooth. Just to give it a nice little highlight. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could just leave it with Xandri dust. Uh, optional for sure. And there we are. That's the finished model. Really, really quick scheme. And I think it, it matches pretty close with the uh, with the heavy metal, at least the heavy metal colors. If you put this next to a heavy metal model, it'll look about right. And there's a, a sneak peek at the, the next, one of the next Tyranids I've got there is a High Fleet Typhon. So if you're, you're interested in seeing that, uh, keep an eye out on this channel. And uh, there's a bit of picture of the finished Tyranid. If you can master that feathering technique for the chitin, you'll be able to put together a, a, 
a great looking army very quickly. It took me about an hour to paint this model, but if you factor in the time that I took for filming and experimenting with the scheme here and there, you, you could easily, easily crank out a model like this in 30 minutes and even faster with batch painting. It's a, it's a very, very quick um, scheme to follow. And if you're planning to put more effort into your HQ and centerpiece models, you, you could do another set of highlights on the, the, the chitin with Deepkin Flesh to really push, push that contrast. I have more Tyranid tutorials coming up. I've got ones for uh, High Fleet Typhon, uh, Leviathan, C2, Ouroboros, and Lotan. So uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.